keep in mind that this program tries to hide its intent. So what do you think guys? Will it print these numbers to the console? Or will it do something completely different? Hey guys, and welcome back to my coding channel. Today we're gonna talk about code obfuscation. We're gonna discuss what code obfuscation is and why someone might use code obfuscation, for what reasons. And after that, we're going to look at a program where, where I, would, I will demonstrate code obfuscation in action for you guys. And we're going to look at it together. So let's get into it, guys. Point number one, what is code obfuscation? Code obfuscation means that you take your source code with all the nice variable names, all the nice function names, comments, and class names, and you take this version and you try to make it as unreadable as possible. So your goal is to replace all of the logical and nice, um, easy to read function names with unreadable function names. And the same with variables. You, if you have a variable called length, for example, for some that stores some kind of length, you want to just take that name length and make it something random, like for example a letter A, and then use this letter A in your code instead of length. That will make it very hard for a person to read your code. And so the idea is to make your code as unreadable as possible for another human being. And so why, why would you do it? Why would you want to make your code as unreadable as possible? Well, one of the reasons is that you want to protect your intellectual property. You want to make it as hard as possible for someone else to come in and read your code. That is the advantage number one. Advantage number two is to make it harder for some kind of decompilation tool to decompile and reverse engineer your program. And this is another way of protecting your intellectual property. You don't want someone taking your executable binary and reverse engineering it. And so if you use code obfuscation and you change the logic a bit so that the logic does, does produces the same out, output. So your code produces the same output, but you change how it actually produces that output and make it v uh, a bit hard for the decompilation tool to understand that. That will also protect your intellectual property in a better way. So some big companies actually use co code obfuscation for those reasons. Uh, so that is that was the advantages with code obfuscations. What are the di disadvantages? So one disadvantage is that an antivirus program might flag your software if you use code obfuscation. And the reason for that is because uh, when uh, people who produce malware and viruses, they always use code obfuscation in order to hide hide the intent of their software because when you write <laughs> when someone writes a virus you don't want someone to decompile it and immediately see that this is a virus uh, so these people want to hide the intent with their software and therefore they use code obfuscation so whenever an antivirus uh, sees a um, program that is obfuscated it might flag it as malware so that is a big, big disadvantage, guys. Your, your software could be flagged as malware if you use code obfuscation. So now when we have discussed what code obfuscation is and why someone uh, might use code obfuscation, uh, let's look at an example in C, in the language C, where we look at code obfuscation and we discuss it together. Let's get into it, guys. Let's take a look at this code. This is a C program, and it's very simple. We have an array of floats like this, and we print this array B to the console like this, like this. <laughs> so guys, what do you think this program does? Keep in mind that this is an obfuscated program. It tries to hide its intent. And we use some uh, confusing comments uh, just to confuse the reader even more. We write that uh, this is some floating point numbers for testing and the reader takes a look and um, yeah, seems reasonable. We have an array of floating point numbers and then we print the numbers to 
uh, in the array to the console. And the reader might think, sounds reasonable. However, guys, keep in mind that this program tries to hide its intent. So what do you think, guys? Will it print these numbers to the console? Or will it do something completely different? If you want to think for yourself, you can pause the video and then come back. Uh, and we're going to run it right now. So I'm in this folder and I have main.c, which is uh, this main file. Let's compile it. All right, no warnings, no no errors, and we have this a.out file. And if we run a.out, we get hello world. So as you can see, guys, this is a hello world program. However, it's a bit obfuscated and you don't really see that this is a hello world program. So how does it actually work? Uh, so each, each of these uh, floats, when you convert it to a character, uh, it will produce, it will, well, it will store the value in float in the character uh, variable as, well, in, uh, as a character. However, it will, when we print this, it will print, print each, each byte as a separate character. So for example, le let's, let's take this number and let's declare it as A, like this. And if we just print a, it will produce hell. So, as you know, each character is uh, one uh, one byte, and so this a float um, float variable a contains this number. And this number is, as we can see, four bytes because it produces four different um, uh, letters. And each letter is a character and the character is one byte. So when we have four letters, we know that, uh, we know that this, is, uh, this value takes four bytes. And when we cast this to a character, each byte will be will be converted to a specific letter so the first byte will produce a capital h so the first byte in this number if we would convert it to binary and take the first byte it will correspond to the letter h and the second byte will correspond to letter e and so on and uh, yeah guys if we change the number to this instead of this and do the same thing again we'll get another four four characters so we get o space w and o because this is also four bytes and if we do the same thing for this uh, and run it we get another four characters guys so each float uh, variable is four bytes long or it, it has four bytes in it it consists of four bytes and when we convert such a variable to characters we get an array of four characters each character will be representing a byte in in this float number and uh, uh, then uh, the system will just look up the corresponding letters for uh, for each byte value. So in order to make this work, if we uh, had to start over from scratch, we would need to find out these, num these exact numbers so that their byte values map to the correct letters. And um, so this is a very interesting Hello World program that I, I found very, very interesting. And um, uh, I found this uh, program on uh, Stack Overflow, I believe. I will link a link in the description uh, to the source of this uh, source code. Um, 
And so this is a very, very good demonstration of obfuscation because the reader doesn't understand what this means. And even if you would decompile it, it might be a bit trickier for the, for the decompiler to actually understand that this is that this will be turned into uh, into a string, which is hello world. So this obfuscation protects this intellectual property from readers, but also from decompilers. So that's it, guys. This was obfuscation. What do you think about obfuscation? Have you have you used it before? Uh, leave, leave your opinions in the comments below. And in, if you're new to this channel, you should definitely subscribe. If you're a coder, if you're a programmer, a developer, if you like technology, this is a channel for you. Uh, all right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow.